Mr Wildwood Cottage. Beautiful day here today. Hope you've all got some sunshine where you are. It's an absolutely stunning day here today. And uh, I thought it was time to come out in the garden. So I've got a few things to show you today. Um, I've got my fruit trees to show you, me planting them up. And uh, yeah, we're going to get out in the garden and we're going to have a look at the uh, Dig for Victory spec. It's time to get stuck in. The ground has thawed out and uh, the sun's out, as you can see behind me. And uh, yeah, it's just a lovely day. So I thought I'd bring me a cup of tea and sit out in the polytunnel. Uh, I'm thinking of letting the ch chickens out in here. I just need to make it safe for them because there's plants all over the place that I don't want nibbled. So yeah, we're going to have a look at that, and I'm going to come and ha I'm going to have a look at my seeds as well because I've been watching a few videos online, and uh, there's things that I can get on with sowing now and grow them in propagators on the window sill in the house and trying out with the mice. So that's what I thought I'd do this year. I thought I'd try starting them off in the house. Um, I've got proper windowsill propagators with the three pots in the tray. So I thought I'd do that. So we're going to do some good old-fashioned wartime vegetables. And uh, we're going to do parsnips. We're going to do beetroot. We're going to do cabbages. We're going to do potatoes. The seed potatoes are out here in Wales at the moment. They're uh, for sale in Charlie's and the Animal Feed Shop. So I think I'm going to get some of them this week. I know it's a little bit early. But I want to get a head start with the earlies and I thought I can do them in bags and start them off in here and they'll get a head start on the rest of the garden because I am going to do potatoes in the garden but the soil's not ready yet. I've got this bit out here to do just to the side of me here and um, it's still looking all overgrown full of brambles but uh, now is the perfect time to get stuck in and my husband very kindly bought me a nice new pair of leather gloves for Christmas. So I can use them for getting the uh, brambles out. I've also got some hedge laying gloves as well in the garage. So I can also try them. I can hear something buzzing. Is there a bee? Yes, it's the first bumblebee. It's not even February. The sunshine's woke it up. I can't believe it. A big bumblebee. <laughs> in the polytunnel. Oh, it's very early. Hope it's going to be all right with the weather. Sunshine's woke it up. How lovely. I did disturb a bumblebee the other week. Uh, well, a couple of months ago. And I was hoping that it had gone to hibernate. So maybe it's that one. It's the same one. It was nesting in my bag here with my perlite and my, uh, what you call it, plant food in. So, yeah. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to have my cup of tea. Um, I'm thinking of lifting the Jerusalem artichokes out as well because they're going to be pretty much ready now. Um, they can stay in the ground but I want to clear the space and uh, I can now start replanting them in the soil for next winter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift them, I'm going to get out the biggest ones and then I'm going to put back um, the smaller ones and pop them back in the soil and they'll do for next year. I always try to grow them in the same space because Jerusalem artichokes will spread. They do spread themselves out a bit and even if you just get a little tiny hair of a root, they'll be growing and you'll never get rid of them. So where they are in the garden at the moment is where I want them. Um, so I'm going to dig them up, get the best ones out and then pop them back in again. So I always try to grow my Jerusalem artichokes and my potatoes together, but I'm going to do some more in bags this year and then I can pop them along the fence lines. And uh, that then will, they'll be, not take up a lot of space and they'll grow quite happily. So we're just going to go out in the garden. We're going to go and have a look around, get stuck into, and then we'll have a look at our seeds. So see you in a bit.
so all this now is my mesh for the garden so I think I'm going to put this bin up by the polytunnel and then that's handy for the veg garden um, and for the polytunnel I've had that mesh for years it's scaffolding mesh buy it on the internet it's quite cheap it's great screen for the garden and uh, some of the holes I need to fix I'm going to sit down on a rainy day and get them fixed but uh, that just lives in there it's got a crack in the bottom so it doesn't hold water and uh, it's a good use of space This is a mulberry um, and I bought it from New Garden a couple of years ago. I got two. They're dwarf. I've got one in a pot and this one needs a permanent home. So I'm thinking of putting it outside the polytunnel. I'm not sure yet. I've got a new Belfast sink and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to plant in the Belfast sink yet. If it's going to be a pond, because I might do a little pond outside. Um, that'll just attract the frogs and things like that to come into the polytunnel and get all the grubs and stuff. So, yeah, so I'm going to put this in the polytunnel, it's going to get repotted. So, that's one thing I've got to do. Have you seen all these boxes I've got? They're um, honey boxes, and they're what they use for transporting all the slats that are inside the honey um, beehives. And they got contaminated, the honey was contaminated for some reason, and they had to throw it away. So all the slats had to be burnt. Um, apparently it happens sometimes, and they have to throw all the honey away. So these were going on the bonfire. But uh, well, the man at the back has let me have, I think there's 40 of them all together. Don't know what I'm going to do with them. Might try making them into seed boxes. I was thinking if I took the bottom out, I could put some chicken wire on the bottom. Use that as a lid on the top, keep the mice out, and uh, use them as seed boxes for sowing lettuce and things like that on. I could always put glass on the top and make them into individual propagators on the top of these. Now this is the wood I showed you the other day that I got off my brother, um, off his old bed, off a double bed. So this is kind of the layout of how it's going to be. I've got one extension coming out this side. And I'm going to have one extension coming out that side that's underneath those boxes there. I've got some of the wood left off the bed and I'm going to make legs on that side and try and find a way to anchor it onto the stand. And then what I can do then is when I'm ready to plant my tomatoes, if I've still got seeds on the top, I can plant them underneath, finish off what I want to do with the seeds, put the seeds outside. And then as the tomatoes grow or the cucumbers grow, I can then attach them onto these um trellises up here i'd like to do something better it worked for last season but i'd like to do something better it's a bit floppy it's not very good for the weight of the cucumbers and i'd like to be able to get the cucumbers to grow up around the tunnel so i need to try and work out how i'm going to do that um on this side i'm going to do something similar as i showed you the other day i've still got that red stand to use so that's going to go on this side i have got another two of those so I'm going to do the same kind of setup on the other side and then that's going to work over there. And then again, it's the same thing as I start planting up underneath. I can plant up underneath and grow above at the same time. And again, I'd like to do something on this side that uh, would mean I can grow up around the hoop of the polytunnel and pick my cucumbers a lot easier and grow the tomatoes underneath. So that's my plans for that. That's my thinking for that. My garlic went a bit mouldy because I tried to hide it for the mouse. But uh, I have got a few things, but I'll do it again. Now the weather's cold, I'll start again. But uh, I've brought my asparagus in. There's about 30 in here, I think. Um, and they're all to go up the back of the garden. There you go, there's one there. See, I bought these off uh, DT Brown last year. I was wondering whether to buy some more. Because they do look like they're good plants. I just laid them in soil until I could get round to planting them. And as you can see, they've got really good roots on them. And they did sprout last year. So, so that's my plans for them. They need to go in the garden as soon as possible. 
but you don't harvest often for three years so I'm not too fussed about the rush for that um, but as you can see there's a few strawberries in here that need taking out and um, popping into pots now when it comes to recycling here it's um, an hour away it's been a nuisance when we met when we first moved here there was one in town and that was only about 10, ten minutes away but uh, slowly but surely they're taking them all away and uh, there's one an hour away and one 45 minutes away so it's not that easy to take your rubbish away and they're very fussy about what they'll pick up from the house so that's why rubbish doesn't move away very quickly but what I've started doing now is going to the recycling centre to the tip when um, I go and do my shopping and I just put a bit in the car, go to the tip and then go to the shops. So that's what I'm going to do next week if I go to the shops. Because um, I might not go till the week after because I don't really need to go. And uh, just fill my boot up with some rubbish and take it off to the tip and get it out of the garden. So I need to sort out really in the next day or so what I want to put in the uh, bin, what I want to keep and uh, get the garden tidy. So I'm just going to go in and get my porridge. Um, and then I'm going to come back out carry on with the tidying and try and get the garden ready for strong winds tomorrow. I think I prefer this hard frost but I can't get on the garden and do anything so hopefully, hopefully that's going to sort the garden out and I'll be able to get out and get the soil ready, get the victory garden organised and get the raised beds finished behind the polytunnel and then I can decide what I'm doing with the greenhouse. As you can see one job follows on from another round here and uh, it's not just a case of let's do that it's let's do that but oh i've got to do that and then i've got to do that oh i've got to do that as well hmm. so yeah right i'm going to go and get my porridge come back out charge my phone and then come back out and get stuck into the garden so i'll see you in a minute right so what i've come out to do now is to do my fruit um i've got some compost in my compost bucket here and I thought we'd do the new fruit trees together. So these are the trees that I've got. They arrived the other day. And they look really good trees, but the roots are drying out and they need to go in some soil. You're getting lost in the sun there, aren't you? So yeah, I've got four. They've got a bit dried out, they've got really good roots on the bottom. Um, they're good plants. This one is a champion quince, which is a dwarf. They're all dwarfs. Um, I might get a little bucket of water and soak them in some water first. I got them off each crop nursery. Never used them before. I usually use U Garden. I've gone off you garden. I'm not impressed with their plants. Not impressed with their customer service. I think they're quite rude. Very unhelpful. Um, so yeah, I'm not using them anymore. So I've got this damson as well, which is a Prunus domestica. And this is also a dwarf. I didn't want to overwet them because I didn't want them soaking and they're losing them like a dip of cherries. This is a golden gauge, which is also a type of plum, which is this one here. Um, and that's also a dwarf. Like I say, they're all dwarf. And then this one is a medlar. I've never grown medlar before. Apparently you use them when they're rotting, when they're dropped off the tree, they're overripe. And you can use them in jellies, uh, you can use them to make pies. So yeah, they are a wild plant, so I might try taking cuttings and see if I can grow them on, because they don't look like they've been grafted. Um, this is the label here. Can you see that? Right. Mespilus germanica. And it's a medlar. And it says fruit red-brown, spherical with big crown and five chalices, flesh brown, fresh, juicy, acid, cinnamon-like flavour, after night frost, suitable for consumption, edible when they rot, suitable for jelly, harvest November to December, pollination, self-pollinating. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this because I've wanted one of these for ages and I was looking at them in new garden and they only come in nine centimetre pots 
Um, so they're only going to be about 30 centimetres tall, which in my garden, the first frost have finished that off, so they're just no good for me. So I ordered these because they're nice big plants. I would say this one is about, about a metre long, maybe just over. So it's a really, really good plant. Um, I'm not sure if it's been grafted. It looks like it may have been. But I'm happy with it. So I'm going to go and get my pots and then we'll pot them up together. I'm going to leave them in the polytunnel in their pots and then they won't get the frost um, before they get going. And then I'll just keep them in here in a uh, group together and then they'll sort each other out. So I'm just going to go and find my pots and then we'll pot them up. Right, so I've got my tubs. I've got four decent sized ones because uh, I don't want to choke the roots. I don't want them growing around in a circle. And uh, I want to give them a good stable base so that they don't fall over because I don't want them breaking. So I'll just turn you down and then we'll do the uh, fruit bushes, the fruit trees together. And then they can stay in here with the apricots I've got in here because I've got an apricot in here as well that I got off you garden and it's looking really healthy at the moment. So I'm going to put them with that. So I'll just turn you around, turn you down and we'll do the potting up together. Excuse the noise, the farmer's being very noisy today. Don't know why, don't know what he's doing. Can't see through walls. So we're just going to have to get on and muddle through the noise. So, yeah. So here's my tub. Got my compost down here. And it's one of those concrete composting blocks. One of these. I got them for £5 each in Morrison's. One of these. Never used them before, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I've got my David Austin roses in it, and these don't seem too bothered by it, so do give them a bit of a drink actually. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to use that for my fruit, and I've got one pot for each tree. I don't know what on earth he's doing over there. I tell you what, it's good to be outside again. Makes a nice change. Ooh, got another two of those boxes still to use. Um, move that out your way. I can move you over and you can see what I'm doing. Just a sec. Right, so this is my compost. Sorry I can't look at you. And this is my tub. Now I'm going to pick one with a small root. Right. Because I want it to go up to the base of the root. It's quite setting up a bit better. Nice weather's brought everybody out. As the bee man's there again today. Apparently he's got a mountain of beehives to build. And he's got two months to build them in, so that's why he's so busy. Well, who knows what the farmer's up to? He's a law unto himself, he is. 72 and still charging around like a 30-year-old. Plant that in like that. Make sure it's all nice and firmed in. Not the most ideal of pots, but just for now, just to get them going, because they are going to go in the garden. Uh, that will do for now. So there we are, there's the first one, and this one is the Golden Gauge. So I'm going to do that for all of them. Where's the rest of my pot? I wasn't too sure about this compost when I got it. 
but it doesn't seem too bad actually. It needs a very deep pot. I just don't want the roots drying out because I lost two fruit trees last year and I don't want to lose any more. Because they were soaking in water for months because I couldn't get out to put them in and I ended up losing them so right I'll finish these see you in a minute So I've just come back in the house to uh, sort the tea out and I thought I'd show you the spaces that I'm going to be growing my seeds in. I took my fish out for tea, came from Morrison's, it was reduced. It was reduced from £5.31 down to £2.13. So that's going to be our tea, that's going to be a fish pie for tea. Seem to be having that a lot lately. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd show you a couple of things. I bought some new lights. Um, I bought some new rechargeable lights as well. These ones, they recharge at the back with a mobile phone charger. And you know, the great little lights, I'll put it on. There you go, look at that. So I can actually hang it if I want to. I can actually hang it up there. So what I've started doing every night, you know, is turning the lights off. I know it sounds a bit drastic. But let me just turn that off. I got a bit of a fright when I got my last electric bill. You know, we hardly use anything. I don't use the tumble dryer. Um, we don't have all the lights blazing away. We don't have things on standby. I don't leave the Wi-Fi on overnight. And my last bill was awful. Well, to a lot of people, it was probably really cheap. But for me, I was thinking, where on earth am I using all that electric? So I bought these little lights. And, you know, I think they're going to save me a fortune because I can recharge them in the day. They take an hour to recharge. And they've got a six-hour charge, usable charge. So I can sit there of an evening when my husband goes upstairs. He can take one upstairs with him for reading a book. Um, and I can have one down here. I've also got another one. And I've got my candle. And I've also got my little reading light that um, I charge as well. I'll show you that this one and it sits inside my lamp and it's great you know right so this is my seed growing space and i think i'm going to get quite a lot on here to be honest with you excuse the washing machine in the background that's what i use for my fleece uh yeah i'm going to put two big propagators on here move these few bits off here and i might even get three but i'm just going to use it for growing um the warm stuff the stuff that needs the log burning stove to, to get them growing um, and they're going to get, have this lovely light from the window. The sun's going to come in the morning in this window. So they're going to get direct sunlight. So that's going to be fabulous. Just check me fire. Had to clean the flue the other day. Uh, yeah, this light is fabulous. I can switch it on. I put it inside my lampshade. Where are they? There you go. Look at that. And then I can also alter the level of the light and I can do my knitting by it of a night so that's what I'm doing with that right let's go and have a look at the other spaces right so I've got this space here and I can get another big propagator on here and um, I would get two but I want to keep my plants and um, but yeah I can grow a nice big uh, propagator here and it'll get the sun it gets direct sun from there in the afternoon that's the pond that I did last year in my video my wildlife pond so yeah, I'm going to put another propagator here and I'll probably do the salad stuff in here because it doesn't need a lot of light and um, it doesn't need a lot of heat. So that's going to get growing here. And then this is my last space. There's the polytunnel out there. Can you see the camellia flowers on my camellia tree? There you go. There's a flower just there. So yeah, I'm going to put my propagators here. I've got some window ledge ones and I've got three. So I think I'm going to do the three. I'm going to move that plant. I'm going to do the three all the way along here. And then they'll get the sun most of the day. 
Um, so they're going to grow really well. I've also got this table. I can put this table up and we can put stuff on there as well, which I'll probably end up doing. And then once everything's growing, it can then be moved out into the polytunnel and hopefully the mice won't eat it. Do you like my uh, candlestick, by the way? I made that for one of my challenges on my knitting vlogmas um, at Christmas. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Right, so I think that's it. As you can see, there's not much happening in the garden at the moment. Um, I still haven't rebuilt my oil tank uh, screen. I'm going to do that for a video because I've got an idea for that. So we'll do that in a video. But uh, beginning to feel a bit spring-like. And I don't like it at this time of year. Because it always makes me think the weather's going to take a turn for the worse. Right. So I think that's it really. Would you like to see what I made for our dinner? Um, I made minestrone soup. Would you like to see it? I won't put the light on. Oh, I will put the light on because you won't be able to see it, will you? I've been making bread as well. I got this from um, Little, not Little, Morrison's. Can't remember if I've shown it here before. But it is um, live yeast. 20p for 50 grams of live yeast. Is it 50 grams? No, it was 100 grams of live yeast. So if you go to the bakery in Morrison's, they sell live yeast and it's dirt cheap. And you can keep it in the fridge, warm it up, and then if you want to, like I did the other day, I just added a little tiny bit of uh, yeast granules to it. Do you want to see my bread I made with it? I'm really proud of it. Really proud of it. I'll just turn you around. So this is my bread. I'm really, really pleased with it. Turned out really well. That's not mould, by the way. That's flour. But yeah, I yeah, did it in the in a in a tin. Which one did I do it in? I did it in a casserole dish. I'll just show you. I did it in this one. It's just an ordinary tin casserole dish. And uh, yeah, it rose nicely. I put it in put all the flour and everything together I'll do a recipe at some point and then just left it to sit in the bowl didn't need it or nothing and then I left it for half an hour to an hour let it go all nice and soft and light and airy it just did it by itself and then I got it back out of the bowl and I needed it again I needed it for about five minutes I think split it in half needed it again a bit and then I put it into two separate casserole dishes with the lids on, left it under the log burner, under the stove, and then left it there until it was more than doubled in size, and then put it in the oven. And this is what I got. So I did do another one, but then I put it back in the oven, completely forgot about it, and it's gone like a brick. But it is usable. I had two pieces of it today. It's not going to waste. The outside bits can be ground up into breadcrumbs for using in cooking. And uh, I did, as I say, have a couple of pieces of that today. So my husband's taking some to work. So that's one. And then we've got that one as well. So I'm definitely going to do it again. I used, um, how much flour? I used two pounds of flour. And then water and yeast and a bit of sugar and that was it you could add herbs to it you could make it into a herby bread you could add a bit of yogurt if you wanted to um but yeah that's that so that's in there and then over here this is my minestrone soup now this is out of my we'll eat again book and look at that, isn't that lovely? It's got no meat in it. You could add some meat to it if you wanted to, some pork. Um, it's got macaroni in it. It's got black-eyed beans. It's got a carrot. It's got a lentil, a, a leek, um, some chopped tomatoes, some herbs, some celery, some cabbage, and that's it. And look at that. My husband's taken some to work. I've had some for my lunch. And there's enough there for another day or two. So yeah, really pleased with that, really pleased. Right, so I think that's it for today. 
can't think of anything else to show you to do with the polytunnel. Um, I need to get stuck in now really, so I'm going to go in and sort out the polytunnel today. And go and get that organised and get my seed trays and everything so I can do my seeds in the next couple of days. And get them going in the house. Um, and I'm in the process of clearing the Dig for Victory garden, the one I showed you in my last couple of videos, that patch. And getting the strawberries and the raspberries out. So I've been a busy bee since you've seen me last. I've decided to leave the, pot, the greenhouse for now. I'll take that down when I've got some spare time. It's not in the way at the moment. Um, I just need to tidy up all the rubbish. And uh, that the wind blew around. But I want to get on with the garden. I think that's a priority at the moment. So yeah, so that's my plans. So I think that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Um, if you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee or the girls a treat, I do have a Kofi account and the link's in the description bar below. We do appreciate a treat now and again. And uh, if you want to follow me on any other social media, I am on Instagram and I am on Facebook. Um, I do post quite regularly on Instagram and Facebook. I don't do Pinterest. I haven't got the time for all the social media. I do have a blog now set up on um, Kofi as well if you want to follow me on there. The link is in the description bar below and when I do recipes I do post the recipe on there for you so you can see my shop as well for all my handmade stuff on there see my recipes and if you want to buy me a treat um, or the girls a treat you can donate to us on Kofi Ko as well through the links on the Kofi account I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, I will see you soon so take care bye for now bye bye